Time now for a Latitudes and Attitudes look at a new cruising boat. Lying next to the innovative and award-winning SP Cruiser in Oakland, California, is the newest innovation from Island Packet Yachts. Named the Estero for an island off the coast of Florida, she certainly looks the part of an island packet. In addition to the recognizable ivory gel coat and the full foil keel, the Estero sports traditional elements we've come to expect from the venerable builder of 30 years. There's the molded-in bowsprit, a Hoyt jib boom, all lines intelligently led aft, and a large and comfortable cockpit. However, it's below decks where the new Estero really stands apart from previous Bob Johnson designs. Even with the radical departure of the gossard-like layout placing the main salon forward, there is no doubt you're aboard an island packet yacht. From the companionway and aft stateroom, we move forward past the midship's galley and the single starboard head into the main salon. With the centerline drop leaf table down and good storage, this multi-purpose forward section serves as both a comfortable living room and a dining area. Looking aft, you can see how the boat's interior is very bright and open. From the galley, we'll take a look at another cabin that further exemplifies the Estero's multi-purpose functionality. The guest stateroom slash navigation station features an oversized double berth and a large forward-facing nav desk that folds up into place. There's room for all your electronics and a bin for chart storage. Quite spacious for a quarter berth, there's ample headroom and good ventilation. A folding pocket door provides privacy for guests. Across from the conveniently located nav guest cabin is the portside owner's stateroom. Here you'll find a large berth with inner spring mattress, good ventilation, a hanging locker, storage, and even a full length mirror. There's also easy engine and fuel filter access. Just forward of the owner's stateroom is the large U-shaped galley with double stainless sinks, plenty of storage, and separately controlled refrigerator and freezer. To starboard, opposite the galley, is the boat's single head. Featuring two opening port lights and an overhead hatch, the separate stall shower is almost big enough for two. The forward main cabin will comfortably seat seven for relaxed lounging. Swing the table up and you can feed them in the same spot. The table also lowers to make two double berths, perfect for grandkids. You'll find many details throughout the interior that is Island Packet's standard level of high quality. I know you've heard the claim before, but with this interior the boat really does feel a lot bigger than a 36 footer. Sea trials were scheduled the Monday after Pacific Sail Expo. The Passage Yachts crew prepared the boat for a test sail and a combined photo and video shoot. The morning was beautiful, with hopes that the breeze would be out in the bay when we got there. Motoring out of the estuary, we were surprised with the boat's speed under power. The chase boat was Island Packet's SP Cruiser, which proved to be a very stable platform for shooting. With us was none other than photographer extraordinaire Billy Black and his wife and assistant photographer Joyce. Our trusty captain was Jim Tull of Passage Yachts. On board the Estero was Mark Pillsbury, the editor of Cruising World, Deb Reynolds, owner of Passage Yachts, and Torben Benson. Once out into the bay, the sails were unfurled. Unfortunately, the famous San Francisco breeze was less than ideal. We averaged about three knots of wind throughout the morning. It did give an opportunity to dispel any myths surrounding the light air performance of island packets. We all know how well Bob Johnson's designs handle heavy seas, but we were duly impressed with the Estero's ability to squeeze every ounce of speed out of the ghosting conditions. Once we rounded Treasure Island, we were able to find a bit more wind. Not a heck of a lot more, but eight knots of breeze was a welcome change. It gave the Estero an opportunity to kick up her heels just a little bit, giving us a glimpse into her capabilities. We were able to reach 5.5 knots in the somewhat fluky conditions. Perfectly reasonable performance for a 36-foot full-keel cruiser that displaces 17,000 pounds. We hoped the breeze would continue to get stronger, but Mother Nature had other plans. At least Mark and Deb were enjoying their work. Just another tough day at the office. Another point of departure from other island packet models is the absence of a cutter rig. Instead of a staysail, the ever-present Hoyt jib boom is, in the Asterix case, rigged to the jib itself. When it became readily apparent that the wind was not going to improve, we furled the sails and made for port. Later in the evening, we reconvened back out in the bay for an aerial photo shoot. 
Billy and Joyce were in the helicopter and got some great images of the Escaro under sail in better conditions. 14 to 15 knots of wind allowed the boat to find her groove, giving Deb the impression that this brand new and innovative model from Island Packet Yachts is destined to make quite a splash. The Florida-based builder has listened to their customers, who have asked for the same Island Packet comfort and quality in a slightly smaller package. We think fans of Island Packets are going to be very satisfied with Bob Johnson's Astero response.